Good evening and welcome to Dealmakers of Comic Art, where we bring artwork onto your screen and into your home. Our format is simple. Two dealmakers will each present 10 pieces of artwork for sale to be claimed by you. But before we begin, here's the rules of the road. Dealmakers will showcase a total of 20 pieces. Each dealmaker presents artwork in segments. Each segment highlights three pieces of artwork for sale and lasts about two minutes. The final segment will highlight just one piece of art. It's easiest to claim artwork while it's being presented, but can be claimed anytime during this live event. To claim artwork, type the word claim, the piece number, and the dealer. For example, claim three Bashar or claim seven Will. This episode, artwork will range from $195 to $6,500, and there will be a rundown at the end of the show for unclaimed art. After that, any remaining unclaimed artwork will be available for 24 hours following this live event on Dealmakers of Comic Art's Facebook page, which you can see the address there. Viewers are welcome to claim through Dealmakers' Facebook page, but again, it's best to claim during this live event. And we'll put this up at the end, and it's also in the write-up on YouTube, but if you claimed any artwork, there's a contact information for myself and Bashara. Appreciate everybody already hitting the like button. Uh, now, usually I'm solely your host, but today I'll also be playing the role of deal maker. For those that aren't aware, I'm Will Gabrielle, collector of fine comic art for over 30 years and proprietor of Will's comic art page. But how about we bring in one of our usual deal makers who's been shoveling out from over two feet of snow and ice straight out of the bomb cyclone. It's Bashar Malouf of Nostalgic Investments. Hey. Hey guys, <laughs> it's nice to be finally uh, back in my office uh, after um, finally getting dug out today after 24 inches of snow and 50 to 70 mile an hour winds and power outages. So we made it. You you uh, you definitely have me beat. I I think I had eight inches and 40 mile an hour winds. So mm. you but 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 you can win that one. I'm I'm happy for you to win that one. Yeah yeah. My wife <laughs> is not too happy. So. I know. Search for another home continues, so <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah. So we should mention, you know, as, as most of you know, normally Glenn would be here, but unfortunately he had a family emergency, so he's actually in, in travel right now. We want to keep him in our thoughts, send some positive energy his way, but uh, let's, it's, it's been a while since our last show. We, we took some time off because of the holidays, uh, but we're back. So let's just get this thing started, and I insist that you go first. Oh, wow. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Why not? I put a few things together and uh, rather quickly, but hopefully. Um, All right. Here we go. Savage Sword of Conan, 89 page. Um, actually, I pulled out the best Alcala page I've had. Uh, for years, and um, he's in every panel. I mean, I can't ask for much more than that. Um, it's a battle page, and it's very reasonably priced. Uh, if it was a Alcala, Al uh, John Bissem Alcala page, there, I looked on uh, the auction house, three, four, five thousand dollars each. Uh, so for seven ninety five, somebody's getting a. Um, a pretty good deal considering how how strong this page is in every panel uh there's action and he looks great in every panel so um so there that's my first offering next one what do we have oh um a number one page from a number one issue um well we know how Hot Deadpool is. Uh, I figured to pull out a page one from the number one series. So um, it's, uh, you know, nicely rendered by Ian Churchill. Uh, it has Deadpool screaming. I mean, the reason why it's not many thousands of dollars is it doesn't have Deadpool on the page, but has a lot of the other characters uh, featured in the book. But he has him in screaming in the background. But you know what makes this special is anybody that wants loves Deadpool and wants a page from the number one issue 
and it's the splash page from the number one issue. So that's the real magic of this page. Um, so that's number two. Number three. And, oh. and you forgot to mention there were bricks on that page. There are bricks on that page. Oh, yes. That's a big selling point. That's D Dino. Dino and Sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Is that why? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dino. All right. This um, actually, how how good a page, how good a battle page can you get? My gosh. Um, half splash, Hulk battling Thor. Um, I mean, come on. I mean, as a kid, you've always wondered, you know, could Thor take on Hulk and who would be victorious? I mean, this is as good a uh, battle sequence between the two that you can you can imagine. Um, for under a thousand, uh, Milgram inks. Uh, me, so uh, you know, uh, it seems uh, pretty darn, uh, pretty darn in ex exciting and enticing. So um, even though you know. There's no surfer for me, but hey, that's why it's available. So those are my first three, ladies and gentlemen. Off to Will. Come on, Will. Let's see you do. It's a fine Ooh. three, I must say. And and listen, my uh, I'm having a little technical difficulty, fellas. I uh, just wanted to say hi to everybody. Normally, I would pop in the comments, but if I did that, we'd have started five minutes late. So... <laughs> anyway, we'll get on to presenting art. Just to answer Jason's question, I will try and answer some questions. I am selling my own art. I am not selling Glenn's. He will be back at some point to sell his own artwork. So I guess let's get started with my number one. There we go. So this is a Daredevil commission piece that was done nearly 10 years ago. Uh, I mean, look at the cover. It's, it's a cover quality piece uh, of The Man Without Fear. Uh, measure the image measures 10 by 15. It's on 11 and a half by 16 inch board. But I mean, look at those backgrounds. I mean, the work that uh, Marcelo put into this piece is just phenomenal. So I just wanted to bring something out that was a little more affordable, but really had some pop to it. Uh, as far as I know, Jason, it was not published, but uh, and I, I won't say it's in a it's uh, sitting in a folio, but you never know. Good looking piece. But let's move on to the second selection I have chosen. So this is a page uh, Justice League Quarterly number three, page twenty, by Mike Bacone. Uh, just give you a quick synopsis of the page. Uh, you have Martian Manhunter, Captain Adam, along with Silver Sorceress and Maxwell Lord, um, discussing the fate of uh, Sorceress's world. Uh, of course, the League has to learn, learn the hard way that the past cannot be changed, but it's a serious moment on this page. Uh, but the banter and the humorous attention to detail by Keith Giffen cannot be denied if you remember the Justice League International in Europe. Uh, Quarterly was a nice companion. Uh, to those to those titles and and at a, at a easier price point so you get you know a mix of international and europe league members and uh at a, at a much easier price point from from uh, the 90s from that time when those when those books were in their heyday let's move on to the next one i agree rick bob smith does do great inking uh, this is a splash page, Avengers Academy number 10. It's by Sean Chen with uh, Scott Hanna Inks. Uh, this shows uh, Vance Astrovic, or Justice as we know him here in Speedball, uh, teaching a superhuman ethics class to the next generation of Avengers, uh, <laughs> who include uh, male, metal, wow. hazmat, and striker. What's that? <laughs> no, just funny, the ethics class. Yeah, yeah, and ethics. Well, that, that's the funny thing. So one of these characters, Vale, which I think is, uh, I can never see, right right here. Uh, she points out how ironic that Speedball, who once killed 600 people, is teaching an ethics class. So this is uh, <laughs> sort of a humorous and somber page at the same time. But it's an Avengers splash page. Claims three will? Uh, what, I don't know what that means. Is that a claim or...? Somebody. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. Oh, you, you caught that before I did. Thank you. Chrono Chaser, congratulations. It's a nice piece. And, and we broke the ice. Thank you for breaking the ice for us. 
And back to Bashar. Back to the regularly scheduled programming. What do I have up? I have no idea. And maybe you can help me. <laughs> um, I'm not sure which one, but... Oh, that one. Oh. All right, Captain Marvel. What? 1942. Um, I want to offer something vintage, very vintage. Um, you know, doesn't feature the main character. That's why it's so cheap. But listen, it's a faucet page, superhero page from the 40s. 550, Pete Costanza, who did most of his work with C.C. Beck. Um, initially, uh, they thought this was C.C. Beck, but I wasn't too sure, so I just put it as Pete Costanza. I don't know if it makes too much of a difference, but um, for 550, uh, twice up golden age page by, uh, you know, I mean, we know how popular Shazam was and the, the, the second movie will be coming out soon. So for 550, you get a 1942 golden age page. Why not? So there you go. It's all in front of you. Next. <laughs> what? Be, be a little more careful with that 80-year-old page there. <laughs> Just chuck it to the side. Spider-Man, I know he's not too popular, and I know this is not that good a page, but hey, what the hell. Only kidding. Look at this page. Oh, my God. Spectacular Spider-Man 254. That's a spicy I mean, page right that there. That is. And if you'd like, I can increase the value by 2 or $3 million if I just color in the costume in black. And there you go. You'll have a great deal for nine fifty. I don't think that works in Boston. Oh. Oh, it doesn't? Okay. Well, I'll put it in an auction and see what happens. So, hey, Spidey, Spectacular Spider-Man page, this good uh, for under a grand seems like a um, not an unreasonable deal, but who knows? You guys be the judge. So, next. Oh, a cover, an X-Men cover. This, oh. this is sort of like pot luck for you, I'm noticing. <laughs> I'm just, I just you never know what's next. I just grab stuff and I'm like hoping that I have it here. All right, an Essentials X Men cover by Lee Sullivan for under two grand. Um, well, what can I say? Uh, X Men is X Men, and uh, you know from the '90s we know that's very popular. And I believe this is this was published. Uh, I, I believe it's in the UK. Uh, Lee Sullivan did work in both, but I know in the UK. So Essentials X-Men number 38 cover featuring the X-Men for under two grand. Um, I don't know. It seems, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know enough about this period of X-Men, but um, I liked it when I picked it up. So um, I'm sure somebody else will, will enjoy the rendering and the beauty of all these wonderful X-Men characters. So those are my three. Do you know what that really feels like to me that, that I mean, we were talking about that briefly. Um, yeah. and I'm, I'm in the unique position of, of uh, nor normally our two deal makers don't know what the other has, but because I'm, well, anyway, right, right, right. I, I knew what Bashar had beforehand. Uh, and we were yeah. discussing it a little bit and you said you thought that was a UK cover. It looks like it could be a video game cover to me. I'm not saying it is, oh, but yeah. it just reminds me of some of the video game cover art that was put out in the nineties. So, okay. Oh, well, okay, J Jason. Bonus. Who is our Who is our resident X Men expert? UK reprint of an un uncanny issue. Okay, there we go. So, like we thought, oh, UK. But thank you. I'm just saying it does look like a video game a cover of uncanny issue. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Thank you. So I think this is my number four coming up. If ah, oh, there we go. Okay. So I I'll make this simple. What's more in demand than '90s cover art? Affordable 90s cover art. Ooh. And even for a couple of freedom fighters like Black Condor and the Ray, this seems quite reasonable. I mean, it's under a grand. So, I, you know, it's a, um, it's a 90s cover speaks for itself. Those are great Golden Age characters, by the way. That's true. Yeah. And, and I'll look up. Fine. This is on an overlay the logo, so you get I all the art claim, right there. I see a claim by Chrono. Ah. Chrono again, thank you very much. Is that Cousin Chrono by any chance? That, that, no, that is, that is not Cousin Chrono. That's Collector Chrono. Oh, okay. Appreciate it. So we'll move on. My number five piece, Fantastic Four number 505. Here we have nice shots of each of the entire first family of Marvel, complete with Sun Franklin and Inhuman Crystal. Ooh. Uh, 
and reads supernaturally, where is it? Because it's always the mirror on uh, the way I'm looking, is supernaturally scarred by Dr. Doom face. Because at this time, wow. Reed became the, oh, and, and it, no, I'm sorry, it's number five. Reed became the uh, uh, ruler of Latveria. And ironically, he has a scarred face like Doom. Ah, aha. Uh -huh. Better known as Scarface, yes. But um, bump. And number six. Number six. Ah, there we go. Number six is Blue Devil. Ooh, he's Blue, a Blue Devil, Devil Splash. So, for those that don't know who the Blue Devil is, permanently bonded to the Blue Devil exoskeleton he created, stuntman and special effects artist Dan Cassie not only gained superhuman powers, but became a weirdness magnet. Who, who'd That's think that in comics, a weirdness magnet? Yikes. On this vintage splash, we see him in a neighborhood bar playing Roadmaster Pinball Game, which the villain in the issue is later Roadmaster, comes to life. Um, and and here, here's a little bit of trivia. I'll, I'll go on. Interestingly, Blue Devil co-creators Gary Cohn and Dan Fishkin initially created the character in an attempt to impress and pitch the idea to the legendary Steve Ditko. Ditko wasn't particularly impressed, but shortly after, artist Paris Collins was and brought the character's signature look to life. So, 80 Splash, probably way too much information, but I felt like researching this one. And uh, there you go. And we'll see what becomes of it. And I won't toss it like Bashar. <laughs> I just have a gentle touch, Will. I've heard, <laughs> I've heard that said. <laughs> That's in private, but thank you anyway. <laughs> so next, what? Oh my goodness, is that Shang-Chi? Wow, this is a beauty. It's actually um, larger than small art. It's, so it's rather big and rather beautiful. I'm just I'm just gonna say it right there. It's um it's it's the last page and it's um it's oh it's in a wash, so it's really you know, I mean this is a beautiful piece of art. That's that's all I gotta say. It it's is a beautiful piece of art, and we know how popular um this character has become, and you know, even even when I uh, sent this over, I think Will, you commented that this was pretty gorgeous. No, it, it's it's striking, but but you're yeah. keeping it in the mylar with all the glare. Yeah, I know, I know. I just realized <laughs> that I still have it in there, but so so just to clarify well, that the image is eleven by seventeen. Yeah, not it's not, it's not ten by it's not ten. So by it's, it is slightly bigger. Yeah, it is. It is. It's almost it's almost full size, uh twice up art. So it's a okay. beauty. What can I say? It's a beauty. It's a beauty. all right. And I'll handle it with uh gentle there we go. Next. Nick, I appreciate that. I, I, uh, I was going to do that during the next interim, but I always appreciate you coming in and, and uh, pushing the like button. Okay, I, I just did. Oh, no, I didn't like that one. No. Oh, what do I... What? Is this a a Mike Mignola page from Mignola. Ah, and this is the one that's with uh, Light Ray and not to be missed, Starfire. No, this is, uh, I mean, we know this This series is pretty popular. Um, and, and this page, especially with Starfire and Light Ray, uh, is pretty dynamic with um, with nice action. Um, you know, I mean, what can I say about Mignola? Um, he's one of our superstars um, that we have in, in the collectible right now. And it, this is a twice-up page also, guys. Um, so you get a lot of art, a lot of Mignola art for the price. And um, he's, you know, you know, what, what can I say other than then he's very popular and uh, very beloved. So there, that's my next one. All right. And, oh, and you make you make no promises about being that your first, your last Cosmic Odyssey page. I know there's some banter about that, but we oh really never. Oh. We never oh, 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 I heard about that, that to be yeah, uh, in the last page. Yeah, I'm, I'm not fortunate enough to have many of those at all. Uh, this page I love. There's always a page that I love uh, on the uh, 
you know, that I put in that I really, really enjoy. The Valkyries, uh, Keith Pollard, Chick Stone combination, uh, Thor, Odin. Uh, this is my pe my era. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, and all those Valkyries in the, oh, in the middle. So, oh, yeah. Oh, it's if you love Valkyries, this is it for you. You know, this is I mean, and also the last panel with the with the seeing eye when well, not the seeing eye that we all know, but another seeing eye. Uh, Odin in the top two panels. I mean, it's it's a it's a great page from a wonderful artist. And I didn't mention that Roy Thomas signed the bottom. So it's just a little bonus, people. Um, but yes, this is a, a beloved page for me. And I figured to bring out, I always like to bring out at least one beloved page, and that's the one that I've and it's, this time. And it's a great storyline. That's that's like part, I don't know, I'm going to say 11 or 12 of like a 15-part storyline that took place during that time. It is a great storyline. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Those are my three. Okay, I will see if I can follow. Masters of the Universe, He-Man. So oh. this is the comic book adaption. It features He-Man, Tila, Man-at-Arms, and oh. Wildor the Keymaster. Remaining fairly popular since the 1980s, Masters of the Universe has seen a strong resurgence in interest these past couple years from longtime and new fans alike. So... Yeah, I've, I've seen like a lot of these sort of 80s cartoons, whether it's Masters of the Universe or Thundercats or, of course, G.I. Joe, that are just like really gaining popularity. And it has been claimed by Nick. Thank you, Nick. We will move on to numero eight. And this is uh, Forbidden Tales of Dark Mansion, number six. So this is a slightly oversized page. I say slightly. It's a little bit wider. Uh, usually uh, 10 by 15. This is 11 by 15 image area. Uh, it was originally intended for the second issue of Spirit World, which would have been published in 1971, but it never saw publication. Uh, even though these are rare uh, finishes uh, and inks, so he finished the pencils and he inked it. Uh, he, he did that from Kirby's Breakdowns and Jack's style and penchant for monsters. Monsters, geez, mobsters. I can't read my own typing. Pension for Mobsters really comes through on the page, which I think you can see. It's a good looking page. I mean, again, you know, I have to disclose it, it is credited as Kirby Breakdowns, but that's a lot of Kirby in there. We will return to that, my number nine. And Rick, I agree with you, Nick does have the power. Uh, this kind of special. It's a vintage pencil piece by none other than Walt Simonson of um, Star Slammers. And um, it measures, the image measures 10 and a half by 12. It's drawn on 11 by 14 uh, drawing paper. Um, I, I did some calculating and uh, this must have been drawn the same time as when Walt was working on the first issue of Thor as uh, this was drawn in May of uh, 83, I believe, and Thor was released in August of 83. So he definitely was working on this around the same time. I just make that point to say he was at his peak. I mean, what many people considered his peak. And you don't often get raw uh, Simons and pencils. So nice piece, good size, vintage. And that great signature that everybody loves, sort of a dinosaur type of signature. Love it. Let's see what you got for your last piece, Bashar. We're, we're moving uh, We're moving at a good clip here tonight. Yes, that was I our think, intent. I think Glenn um, talks a little slower than, than we do. Maybe that's what, I don't know. Yes, he, he likes the banter. As he well. does like the banter. <laughs> And I can't, I can't try to abuse him, and he can't try to abuse me. So there, that will save us time. All right, my last piece is Bill Everett. Bill Everett, twice up. The Ooh. this is the story of um, the ancient one, the the origin, and this actually prominently prominently features 
what happened to the Ancient One. It doesn't have a lot of Ancient One in it, but it's part of the storyline. He is featured up here uh, telling the story of, of what happened to him. So uh, for you Everett fans, this is, uh, this is quite important. And for you um, Doctor Strange fans, and we know Doctor Strange has exploded. I mean, my God, just exploded in pricing uh over the this year my I've, i mean you know i was i've been shocked but uh this is an you know you're not going to get a cheaper page from this story than 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 uh, than this page i've seen uh two sell in a ten thousand dollar range from this story and that was a few years ago so um so it's a beauty uh it's beautifully rendered by the master and bill everett is one of our great masters during this time period so there you go for 6500 you get one of the origin uh retelling well not the retelling the, the original um so this is the kind of page that people are seeking first appearances and origin pages so for 6500 the ancient one you will have a wonderful page that is probably worth more than that as we speak but who knows so there you go number 10 Number 10. So I'll just pause right now for a second and say, please be sure to hit the like button and also subscribe to us on YouTube. We appreciate it. And we will move on from there with my final piece. So this is a, I don't know, we have to move back a little bit. Ah, this is a striking, large, cover worthy painting on 15 by 20 inch heavy board done in 2011 for the longtime Thor collector and curator of the Ye Be Worthy collection, one of my clients. Uh, it shows Asgardian Giants about to attack the Thunder God. And it just presents really well. It's a big piece. It's, it's like twice of size. It's fully painted. I mean, it, it is a lot of work. Uh, Very Richard, dynamic. Terry Beatty. Especially with the, um, with the lightning. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Yeah, no, it's it's really it's it's striking in person. I mean, we always say that it's it's almost always true, but it is striking in person. So big piece, I think it's at a good value, uh, but we'll see if anybody agrees with that. So at this point, I'm going to flip everything back over, and I think we're going to uh, move to the recap. I'm just going to scan the comments real quick. Uh, <laughs> I can't highlight this because I'm not uh, I'm not fully engaged as administration tonight. But uh, Nick says I need to buy on these shows. Bashar is a harder negotiator outside of this show. That is true. That is very true. I I, I need to buy from him on this show from time to time. Yeah, I mean this is the place where I'm like, okay, I'll open well, myself up this time here, but elsewhere I I already brought. You know, it's a different philosophy, and and I'm trying to, you know. You know, yeah, I mean, we're we're you know this is here, and that's that's where you know this is this is a this is a newer format as as most of you know. I mean, pe some people have been doing this for a few years now, but uh, uh, as as far as podcasts, um, I was actually doing one a couple years ago, uh, selling podcasts here locally uh, that Nick remembers. Uh, but anyway, um, it's just trying to appeal to different audiences, trying different avenues, and. You know, yeah, we, we try to bring uh, pieces priced already at, at a good value and and we're willing to wiggle a little bit, not not uh, not drop to our ankles, but but wiggle. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good place to buy. But with that said, Bashara, I think you have okay. all 10 to go through. So let's see ah! how many you can you can shake. <laughs> you oh, can no. shake out. All right. I don't know why, but here we go. Uh Geez, seventy ninety five is all right. Uh, I will reduce it to six ninety five, but uh, I'm not going beyond that. Six ninety five. This is available for any Conan person, any Conan collector out there. I mean, it's hard to get a page as good as this. And Alcala, you know, clearly is known as you know the the inker that gets the most money with, uh, of course, with Bissema. But like I said. They're three, four, five thousand dollars a page nowadays with the Alcala inks. 
But uh, six ninety five dollars for a great page like this, uh, that's available for somebody. So there, number one. Number two, uh, the Deadpool at eight ninety five. dollars uh, Number one splash uh, from the series. Uh, seven fifty. dollars What the heck? Okay. seven fifty. dollars it's available for somebody. Uh, the Deadpool number one splash. I can do, yeah, okay, 750. It's available. All right. The next one is a little harder for me to part with at a discount. Oh my gosh. Um, all right. The best I'll do is 895 on this Incredible Hall 2001 um, battle page because I'd almost like to keep it. Um, so seven uh, eight ninety five. It's available for somebody, and uh, if you love the Hulk and you love Thor and you always fantasize about them battling it out, it's hard to beat that panel on the top. So the half splash eight ninety five is is right there. Okay, number three, numero foro. What is this? Oh, the Golden Age page. Um, man, four fifty from five fifty to four fifty. If anybody wants a Golden Age page from Fawcett and you don't have one, this is Captain Marvel number six. Uh, four fifty. If somebody would like to add one to their collection, we know Shazam has been very popular, and. There it is. It's there for four fifty. That's that's like six dollars under six dollars per year. <laughs> no, of course, Captain Marvel. If Captain Marvel was in there, it would be a lot more, Nick. Yeah, oh, no. That's why be. it's it's four four fifty for somebody. All right. Um, what's next? Do we have oh Spidey? All right. I can't get these pages this cheaply. Um, 950. Oh, okay. And and Alberto agrees with you. $450 for an 80 year old page is indeed awesome. <laughs> that is pretty good. Uh, we can do 825. 825. Why not? Somebody will be happy with a Spider Man page this good for 825. Can't imagine not liking this page for from spectacular spider-man this good inked by dan green for 825 let me write that every time i hear spectacular spider-man i can't get the theme song out of my head the the animated show it just pops oh, yeah yeah spidey is rocking and rolling nowadays isn't he what do we have? We have the essentials cover. Uh, we can do uh, seventeen hundred. We can do seventeen hundred on the essentials X Men cover. The essentials X Men cover is available for seventeen hundred dollars. Let me write that down. Less yes. than 300 per character. There are a lot of characters on this on there. <laughs> All right. Essentials, 1,700. Okay. Don't worry. If you're, if you're, uh, I, I'm writing them down if you're not. No, 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 no problem. I'm getting to the four. My four favorite pages are all in a row other than the, the Hulk one. All right. Here we go. Uh, this is, I mean, this is great. Uh, what can I say? 1975. Uh, Shang Chi, um, not just drawn but in a wash. Seventeen ninety five is going to be the, the the best I'm doing on this page. Uh, just a great great page, beautiful. Um, so seventeen ninety five is what I can do on the Shang Chi Deadly Hands of Kung Fu page. All right, let's see. Number one, and, and that is not, I agree with you. That is an absolute gorgeous page. The wash, yeah, and the very, very rare 
rarely seen in on my hands with a cosmic odyssey page is 3100 3100 and you have a claim bashara on uh, not on the uh on the oh. shang chi page shang chi okay yes congratulations donovan we appreciate nice, it it's a good nice pickup move, donovan that's a good pickup that is a beauty all right back to the rare never before seen cosmic odyssey number two page for 3100 with star fire and light ray and um and the two guest appearance uh okay i don't know who they are but here you go <laughs> and i just I, you know i probably could identify them but i, I yeah i can't see that you so. might be able to identify them i, have, yeah. I don't know who they are Ah, here's my favorite page of the lot um for keith pollard chick stone uh 26 is the best i will do on this page so you know ahead of time um happy to keep it <laughs> but if somebody wants it for 2600 with all the valkyries the beautiful shot of thor the beautiful shot of Odin, uh, Keith Paula pages are, are have been, you know, as we know on this, you know, I think somebody's watching out there that knows that have been going up. Um, so 2600 for the wonderful Keith Pollard Chickstone page for, from Thor. Um, I, I, you know, I'm a big fan of this page. So that is the that. Page. I, I love that whole series. Keith's work on Thor is just among my favorite all right and probably the one that will hurt the most other than the last one is the uh the origin um the ancient one um the best uh, and you just had a claim michael congratulations on the on the thor page oh yeah that's really yeah that makes sense good job michael that that does have your name written all over it at 2,800, oh, I'm okay, 2,600. Uh, Strange Tales, Origin, Ancient One, 59 is, is it on this one. 5,900 for 1966, Strange Tales, 148, Ancient, Origin, Ancient One story. This is part of the story. So this is not just any page from the story. It's part of the, his origin so um so whoever gets this will be quite happy with it considering um dr strange has been on fire i mean on fire you know what can we say you know his his art is just it's gone ballistic and of course bill everett is bill everett and there's no need to hype up his art right Mark? that's that's page eight that is page eight from the 10 page story from the 10 page story okay yeah, yeah. Page eight so it's, prob it's probably a second it's probably the second story in the book because i see like a 28 or something at the top i think yeah Nick yeah yeah, yeah. This, but this is the um the the ancient one origin story and never never before you know this is the first time we is revealed everything about the ancient one and how he became the ancient one all right there you go those are there my we have it my little, and um, anyone is free to jump in if they there is thought about it and want to come back in on one of Bashar's pieces. There's still some of, I think, one through six and eight and ten are available uh, if anybody wants to jump back in. Uh, but we'll move on to mine for now. I think my first piece is still here. Yes. The Daredevil Commission by Marcelo Ferreira. Uh, again, image is 10 by 15, 11 and a half by 16 and a half board. Lots of detail. I will come down to $150. I don't think I can go any lower. I think that's a lot of commission for $150. Even the little cut lines or, no, I, I don't feel anything. Maybe they're not cut lines. Maybe they're just detail lines in there. Nick will come back to that if you don't yes, mind. Nick. Yes, it is, $148. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So $150 on that one. Uh, piece number, is it number two? Yeah, Justice League Quarterly. Uh, number three, Mike McCone. 
Manhunter, Captain Adam, Silver Sorceress, Maxwell Lord. Uh, I can come down to 295 on this one. 295. And again, this is sort of like um, the heyday of, of uh, you know, Justice League International in Europe. So Quarterly was a nice companion at a uh, more comfortable price point. I think number three was claimed as well as number four. So yes, moving on to number five, uh, the Fantastic Four page, Fantastic Four number 505, uh, Porter and Rapman. Uh, I can come down to 300 on this page. And again, it has all the FF, including the scarred face Reed, who's the stand-in for Dr. Doom at this point. And I think number number six, yes, Blue Beetle. We won't go through the whole spiel I went through on the opening. I just got carried away with the research. Um, but uh, I can come down to I'll come down to six ninety five on this one. Oh, thanks, Nick. I wasn't aware that Howard doesn't draw traditionally. So yeah, that makes that FFP just a little more special um but 695 on the blue beetle blue beetle blue devil thank you i didn't have dinner sorry let's <laughs> move on to uh i think it's number eight yes forbidden tales of dark mansion mobster page again kirby breakdowns with royer finishes and inks nice kirby That's really cool. comes through on that one uh, even on the back, there's a lot of notes on the back. Unpublished Super World number two is originally from Weird Mystery Tales, Days of the Mob. Uh, and it says Kirby and question mark, and then it's signed Royer under the question mark. So I guess they weren't sure who was going to need this one initially. But 1972 Kirby page, slightly oversized. It's about an inch wider than most standard size pages. Unfortunately, we don't have a, a, a claim Dino 15 on here. So <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just have to uh, stick with one through 10. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. So moving on. Uh, how much? Okay. I'll, you know, if we could just go back for a second. I'm sorry, Kay, to number eight. There's quite a bit of, uh, I'll take this off. There's quite a bit of, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there is definitely some. Some seasoning on there, some seasoning from Jack's table. I don't know how well it comes through. Like I said, it's a lot of notes on the back here. Definitely DNA on there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't I didn't swab it for DNA, but there's def <laughs> there's definitely seasoning around the edges there, which which we would see on Jack's <laughs> table. And number nine, we have the Simonson vintage pencil. Which I will come down to 1150, and this was published. I'm sorry, this was drawn just three months before Thor 337 was published. Oh, so he probably drew this, you know, while he was drawing that. And I'm just going to have to back up for a second and put the rest of these down. I'm not used to being on this side of the equation, but uh, this huge 15 by 20 on heavy, uh, what is that, Electromax 2200 illustration board. Um, it's done for a longtime Thor collector, uh, one of the pieces he commissioned, uh, really striking colors. It's painted, fully painted. Uh, I can come down to 1200 bucks on this one. Good looking piece, certainly cover worthy. And there you have it. Um, we can bring Bashar back in. 
So Yay. while we while we just uh, we're we're gonna jump off. It's it's quarter of. We we try and keep this. Well, we definitely try and keep this under an hour. Um, yes. We're gonna take up a couple more minutes. Thank you, Rick. It, it, I agree. It is worthy. Uh, Bashar, if you don't mind uh, just saying a few things about your upcoming show. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yes. yes. Um, we're running a show in uh, near the San Francisco airport. Uh, it's uh, February 27th. So anybody out there uh, is invited. We have... Um, well, we have well isn't, isn't anybody invited? <laughs> Did I, well, it's by invitation. Oh, no, no, it's not by <laughs> everybody's invited. And Adam Hughes will be there and uh, and Joyce Chen and uh, Mike Mignola will be there and actually will maybe attending even the show and all of the a lot of other dealers and collectors will be there. So, uh, you know, we're going to start, you know, I figured it's a it's a good time to start something up uh, and then in, in the, um, the Bay Area. So once or twice a year. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys there, February twenty seventh. It's a Sunday, so um, yeah, I'm looking. Forward that was my to question. It. I couldn't remember if it was a Saturday or Sunday. It's a Sunday, Sunday. yeah, the Sunday show. Jason, but, um, you are invited. Alberto, <laughs> it'll be good to see you there, and and Michael as well. And oh yeah, you know, hopefully quite a few others. Yeah, good, good. I know Michael's going. Alberto will be there. All right, good, good. And yeah. this is a companion to your my LA. LA. I'm LA art show that I run twice a year that I'm uh, November and there'll be maybe the end of May or the beginning of June this year. So, um, you know, and, uh, eventually there'll be a third show, but right now the two. So, so yeah. Yeah. From, from, from the other coast, you're, you're, you're doing it. Uh, you're, you're, you're on the right coast currently putting on right. shows on the left coast, but hey. right. Right. But yeah, maybe hint, yeah. hint. Yes, <laughs> yes. I might be moving. To, uh, living in both places so yeah that's the that's the plan anyway snowbird snowbird yeah. i think is uh, yeah, yeah. southern california yeah and and we're also doing another show i don't have the date uh in your area wicked oh the boston show is yeah that, the one day boston show is that april 9th april 9th it's a april real 9th. throwback show run by somebody that that used to run all the good shows that were when it was good shows in boston so yeah Glenn will be there setting up. I think Albert is going to be there. You're going to be there. I'm going to be there uh, setting up. So if somebody wants to come out to Boston in April, it should be a good, uh, it's a real comic book show with real, um, you know, real. Real um, comics, art. real people. art, and real people. And real people. Just a one-day show. So, all right. Not bad. There's things coming yeah. up. No, I'm I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, of course we 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 will always do uh, the New Jersey Art Con. Apps, uh, freaking lootly. I just didn't. Uh, that's a little bit further away. I would definitely mention it. But thank you, Jason, for bringing it up. Uh, I think that's uh, towards the end of April. The we end of April, twenty third. I, I I've yeah. said it. I'm a permanent fixture there uh, until it stops. So yeah, yeah. Too close for me not to do. Yeah, it's a good show. Yeah, it's a good show. Close me not to do. And uh, Rich, we will also see at your show in, in San, your inaugural show in San Fran. So good. Oh, yeah. Rich will be there. Yeah. All right. Guys. So, with all that said, thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Thank you for coming out to view us. It's a different night for us Monday night. We're going to be sort of playing with our schedules a little bit uh, upcoming. We'll see. We have to huddle. The three of us, the four of us, and and figure out what's what. Uh, but we'll announce soon. Uh, I will be putting any unsold items up on uh, on the Deal Makers of Comic Art Facebook page. Uh, they'll be up uh, by tomorrow morning, and they will be available till uh, noon on Tuesday. Something like that. Our Adams is going to be at the San Francisco show. Yes, somebody was asking. Our Adams and Mike Mignola. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that'll be a great guest lineup just, just right there. So, Rick, we appreciate the, the good wishes to Glenn we, we, uh, and Mark as well, and, and, and we agree. Um, you know, we're sending him positive thoughts. Uh, but with that said, thank you again. Congratulations to everyone that claimed. Bye, everybody. Uh, check in with Facebook and look for the announcements and have a good night. And here is... Uh,
Here is uh, information if you need it. Kay, you're going to have to take us out because I have no control. <laughs>